Hello and welcome, fellow Wasteland survivors. I'm Dean. Thanks for stopping in. This is part one of a two-part series on this settlement build here at Echo Lake Lumber Mill, which is located in Far Harbor. This build has taken almost a year to complete. Because of that, in today's video, we're going to see some tips and tricks, but most of it will be highlights of what I did to get this settlement to work. And because of that, this could be considered my crowning achievement of all the builds that I've created in this game. Now, you may be asking yourself, okay, what's so awesome about this build, Bones? Well, we've created the Adam Cats Bowling Alley, and it is 100% fully automated. It'll take the pins away, it'll restack them, and I can bowl over and over again as much as I would like. Now, in today's video, we're going to work on the building and the starting of the pin box. So, let's get the video started. <laughs> To start, we're going to need to repair the building that's already located here, and it's in pretty bad shape. Now, most of the tips and tricks that I use to repair this building we've already seen in other videos, so there's no sense of going over them again. But what we are going to see is some of the differences that I did and some of the highlights of repairing this building. One of the big things that was done here was I created prefabs in a different location, group selected them and brought them all over together in one unit. This allowed me to fix large areas very quickly and get them into places that they normally wouldn't go. For instance, like right here. I'm trying to put this eave in. It's got a little bit of a gap. It needs to be a lot lower. So we'll take out the ceiling, snap it to it, bring it back over, and that'll close up the gap. By doing it in multiple pieces, it made it a lot easier to repair everything. The ceilings, the walls, the floors, and the roofs. Also another thing that I did quite often in this build was create double walls. In other words, we have the wall surface on both sides of the wall. We don't have that ugly framing look on one side. And here's a great example of what I mean. I've created this little L-shaped wall, and we're going to try to repair this part of the build with it. And as you can see, by using a ladder, I was able to actually place that inside quite a few or a, a large area of the pre-existing building. It was fairly easy to clip and insert by using group select a lot of objects into these walls, roofs, and ceilings. Unless you're using mods, not many of the objects that we have in our build menu really match these buildings any at all. For an example, on the top floor we have a pretty badly destroyed roof. Now the one side I was able to repair fairly nice and it looks pretty good. But the other side is extremely damaged. And since we don't have objects that are on the same angles as the pre-existing building, we're going to have to come up with a different idea. So what I've decided to do is create an extra room on the end or on the side where that roof is at. And we'll cover it completely over. We'll use the destroyed part of the roof as the entrance into this part of the build. We're going to need a place to put some beds for our settlers anyways, so this worked out perfect. We've grabbed, uh, group selected, excuse me, the ceilings or the roofs with this metal post, and we brought them over to the build. And you can see just how easy it is to actually get these to clip or insert into one another. And this should look pretty good. It's going to hide the destroyed part of the roof and give us a little bit of extra living quarters. Now, the only thing that we really need to do is fix these end pieces and add in a little extra floor so it's not that slope going down to the wall. 
Now when you go to repair these side pieces, one thing to keep in mind, use a stairs or the ladder. For some reason, the ladders or the stairs give you a little bit better or more generous collision area to the object you've group selected. And as we can see here, we're able to put this wall in pretty nice and insert it into the other pre-existing wall. I will also use the same tips or the techniques to repair all the floors in the building as well. By using the ladder, it was extremely easy to insert floors into the pre-existing floors. All right, now on the outside, we want to create one large building to house our bowling alley. And I'd like to use these billboards as walls or part of our build. It'll kind of maybe give it a mural look on the wall. So what I've done is I've placed in some of these concrete foundations and adjusted them up until I got to the bottom of the billboard. Also, on the other side, I've created a little deck where settlers can go out there and get a nice view of the fog. Um, yeah. Okay, now we're also going to need to place some stairs right about here someplace that'll drop us down onto the floor we're standing on. The hard part about all of this was adjusting it and getting it just right so that it matched up to our pre-existing building and the repair work that we've done to it. We're off a little bit, but I don't think it's enough to hurt us. All right, now it's time to start laying out the lanes to our bowling alley. Also, we're going to need to finish our roof with it as well. Now I've got an idea on a way that we might be able to get our bowling balls brought back to us so that we can use them over again. And what we're going to do is use some of these items in the ball track system. I think we can drop the bowling ball through this chute and then we can put something down on the floor for it to drop into. So we'll put a couple of these up and then we'll check them for adjustments. Now they're not exactly where they need to be. So we're going to use some of the concrete pieces and adjust them until we get them right in the sweet spot of the floor where we need it to be. And now we'll go ahead and put a few of the roofs up so we can see how it's going to look. Also, one of the things I wanted to show here is quite often you can float these objects without using group select. It's not snapping in there. We're actually floating it on top of the other two objects. And because of that, it makes it pretty easy to adjust if it's not quite right. Now, we'll go ahead and use a few more of these ball tracks to try to create some kind of a little holding area for our bowling balls. And this worked out pretty good, and I was extremely happy with it. Now, I really do enjoy bowling, but I've only ever had the opportunity to do it a couple of times in my life. And if you ever saw me bowl, you'd call me the gutter king. So I thought it would be extremely important to put gutters in on the sides of our lanes. And we're going to use these conveyor belts to do it. What I've done is I've dropped the floor down one floor thickness below our original floor. And then we're placing in some of these uh, conveyor belts to hopefully simulate or give us a gutter look. Now we can go ahead and bring our floors back up and place them in where they need to be. Now because the conveyor belts are not as wide as a half a floor, we're off by the thickness of a concrete wall. So we'll just use our little concrete wall tip and trick to move the floor over. And we're nice and tight up against the conveyor belt. Now you might think to yourself, well that's going to leave a gap on the other side. And you're right, it's going to, but guess what? We're going to need gutters on those sides as well. So it gives us perfect room or plenty of room to add gutters to all three of our bowling lanes. And then we'll re replace our floors back and I think we've got a pretty good layout to our lanes so far. Now, really at this point, there's not much more I can do on this build until we actually get our bowling pin drop system created. I don't know how it's going to fit. And really, I don't even know how I'm going to make it. I've got a few ideas, and this is one of them. First thing that we need to do is create a jig. 
and we're going to create a jig out of these half of barn walls. So I've placed a barn wall on a floor and I've snapped a concrete wall to the top of it. I've also snapped another concrete wall to the one side. Now we're going to take a half a concrete wall, place it on the other side, and then we'll snap a uh, concrete pillar in the middle of it. By doing this, I'm going to be able to offset the wall by half the thickness of a concrete wall, which is almost the size or the thickness of a regular barn wall. So we'll put these in there and get them all adjusted. Now the reason that I'm doing this is so that I don't have to do it every time I create another barn wall. We need nine of them. And this is just too much work to do this every time we need to offset by the half a wall. So what this is doing is the wall on the right hand side, it snaps to that, we can put another barn wall up. Then when we move it forward, it snaps to the wall on the left, and then another wall. And if we'll just keep doing this, we can do as many of these walls that we need. And you can see that they're nice and tight up against one another, and they're all exactly the same distance apart. Now, the reason that we need to do this is because we're going to try to create a box and we want all of our pieces even and matching as best that we can. So we'll take the signs that we're going to use, we'll group select them, bring them over, and use this single wall to line them up. We'll use the side here and the top, that way we get all of our signs exactly in the same position. And we'll just keep moving this wall along our jig until we get all of the signs lined up. Like I said, we're going to need nine. All right, now we've got one more jig to make before we can start creating our box. And this jig we're going to create out of these electrical conduit pipes. Now at the particular time that I was making this jig, I didn't really realize just how important this was going to actually be later on in the, vi uh, the build. So I'm extremely glad that I spent the time to get this as close to perfect as I possibly could. We need the spaces between these conduits to be exactly the same size as the space between the thicknesses of our barn walls. So that way our squares are perfectly square. Now the reason I'm making a jig for these conduits is because if at any time I made a mistake I could always come back to the jig and make any adjustments that I might need to make. And here is one of the examples of me making a slight adjustment to the jig to make sure that it's as perfect as I possibly can get it. Now if you are new or a first time viewer to our channel or community, this might be a little confusing what we're doing here. So for your convenience, on the screen somewhere is flashing a link to another video that does explain how to make jigs in a lot greater detail and you might be interested in checking that out. All right, now that we've got our jig adjusted, we've made a copy of it and we're ready to bring it over to our signs. Now I've group selected all of them and I've added on some extra pieces so that we can do adjustments if we need to. These are the signs that we created from our half a barn walls. And they're all, like I said, exactly the same distance apart. So we're going to go ahead and place this in wherever we can. Now even though we've got these conduits quite a ways into the signs, there's no way we could ever re-snap the conduit back in to its original position. And it's going to be extremely important that we're able to do that. So what we can do now is add on a few extra conduits, take out the middle row, and now we can group select those conduits and move them up and down and adjust it until we get those conduits that are in the signs exactly perfect where we can snap them in and out. And that looks good, so all we need to do is put all our pieces back in. Now, the reason that we're going through all this trouble 
is because we need to actually place signs in the opposite direction. So to do that, we're going to use two of these conduit uprights. One is the vanilla height one, and one is the barn wall height one. We'll go ahead and snap the vanilla one on first, and we'll put a conduit on it. Now we can take that one away, and now we can snap the bar, uh, barn-sized upright to it and add another conduit. What we're doing is we're creating a false wall that we can actually snap or place signs on. And because of the bottom conduit, it makes it extremely easy to place these signs up and get them all nice and level. Also, the only one that it's snapped to is the top conduit. Now when we bring it over to our, our not jig, but the thing we made off our jig, we can see that we were able to snap those signs into the other signs to create a square. But there's a problem with this design. These signs are too thick. And as you can see right there, they stick out past the conduit or the sides. So what I decided to do was go back to the original signs that we were using, and they're a little taller, and do the same thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the thing that was really good about this was I was actually able to move the sign side to side to make any adjustments that I might need to make. Because these signs are not as wide or as long as the width of our box, we're going to have some gaps. And because of being able to adjust them, I'm going to be able to fill those gaps up nicely. Also, Another thing that worked out great about this was if I used the quarter-sized conduits, I could actually, uh, I don't even know how to explain this, I could actually bring them over and snap them up to our conduits to make a longer sign, I guess is the best way to explain it. Even though it sticks out a little bit, we now have one full length all the way across our, our box. And this is going to be a great way to, um, to not use a lot of objects while we're creating this box. Now, the design concept for this drop, uh, pin drop system is to drop onto a conveyor belt. So here in this clip, all I'm doing is I'm just checking to make sure that the widths and the lengths of our box will match up with the conveyor belt. We don't want a pin dropping through the box, hitting the edge of the conveyor belt, and falling over. They're already going to do that. Also, we don't want it to not land on the conveyor belt. So that's all we're doing here is just making sure our box is the same size. All right, now let's move on to a few things that we didn't use in the build, but were helpful in designing some other things that we did use in the build. In this particular clip, what I'm wanting to do is create some walls or some fillers for gaps in our box that our signs didn't actually fill up. Now this idea did work extremely well, but it took a lot of objects to get the job done. Also, when I was inserting them into our box and getting them ready, it took an immense amount of time to line these up. And even though I may have uh, quick saved before I did this, there were numerous times I had to reload the quick save. This is one example where I did get it right and it looked pretty good. But that's why we designed the box the way we just saw in the previous segment so that we just didn't have all of these objects in our box. If you notice our build size is already pretty big and we're nowhere near close to getting finished. So we really need to skimp on the size of our, our build as much as we can. It looked good, it worked good, but it was just too many objects. Here is another example. I was trying to build kind of a funnel. So what I did is I placed some of these ammo signs in a row, used this conduit upright to group select them, 
pressed it into the wall so I could see it and then pulled it away from the wall a little bit. Now we can go ahead and place some more ammo signs because they'll uh, clip or snap onto the wall and then we'll just rep uh, repeat the process over again. We'll regroup, select it, push it into the wall, pull it back out, put on some more ammo signs and if you do this correctly you kind of get this stair step pattern. Alright, now we didn't use those in our build, but they did help us create these little catches on the ends of these chutes. What I need is a way for the pin to slide down into the box, but then be guided into the square hole that the pin needs to drop through. So there are quite a few of those ammo signs here at the end of these chutes. Hopefully what it'll do is if the pin's coming down too quickly, it'll bumper up against those signs and then make it drop down into the box. Also another thing to keep in mind here is I did a lot of testing. Uh, as long as the build took, I probably did twice as much testing in all these objects to see if they'll work. And I usually worked in groups of 10. So I run 10 pins through this, and only two of the 10 pins hung up. All through this entire build, I did work on an 80% chance that the pin would actually go through and work. And here we'll see one hang up in a second, and you'll see what I mean. Because we cannot control how the pins react, you just never know when one's going to hang up but I had to make slight adjustments all the time through this entire build of this box to make sure that they drop through as many times as possible and like I said generally it was eight out of ten times not only did I test each and every individual pin by itself but I did test quite a bit multiple pins together I wanted to see if they were going to actually work in unison and they do this is working out perfect. This design concept is actually the fifth one that I come up with because the other ones just didn't work at all. And once again, even with all of these together, I'm still working on an 80% chance that a pin's going to drop through the box. Just like right there, every now and then one's going to hang up. And there's really nothing I can do about that. Now, this is a good look at our box our pin delivery box and system when it's completed it's ready to go into the build right now but I've kinda run into a bit of a problem and this dilemma actually took me three months to figure out how to do this what we've been doing is we've been testing this box from conveyor belts that are snapped or connected directly to the chutes so the pins are going in straight every time because this design or this idea was not anticipated the idea of the build has to be changed to accommodate how we're going to get conveyor belts to feed this system it's in a perfect circle well I mean it's in a circle and there's just no way that we're going to get conveyor belts to go around in a circle around this box. So this problem did take me quite a while to figure out and in our next video we're going to see the solution that I came up with to alleviate this problem. And with that ladies and gentlemen I think that's the end of today's video. I really hope you guys all enjoyed this. This build was super fun to do. It was hair pulling and everything else that you can think of, but the results that I got at the end were well worth it. All right, everyone. Thank you all very much for coming and hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it. And just like always, until next time, please stay safe and peace.